Hello guys, this is Alex Asumacher from We Talk UAV. In this video we'll be reviewing the Inspire 2 and we'll be doing outdoors some stress tests to see what this machine is really capable of. As you already know, we love challenges at WeTalk UAV and I wanted to do one video summing up all the important features and specs of the Inspire 2. We made it and I've created the fastest review on YouTube about the Inspire 2. And you'll be getting the same information as in a 30 minute keynote. It's a 45 second video with a lot of text. So if you think you're ready, stay focused and let's go in 3, 2, 1, go! Now that the boring stuff is over, anyways, you can check all the specs at DJI website or any other review on YouTube. On We Talk UAV, we don't have enough with what brands say. We actually want to test them. We actually want to try the drones and see if they are telling us the truth. As it's really easy to create a review just by mixing up some of the specs and putting up a few pictures of the brand. So now let's see what this machine is really capable of. For the first test, I read in a forum a pilot saying that the Inspire 2 wouldn't be capable of lifting up more than 7 pounds, which is 3.2 kilo. And what did I do? Yes, I tested it. Check it out. I had an oil can almost two thirds full and it weighed 3.7 kilo, which is almost 8.2 pounds. And I thought, okay, this is reasonable. Let's see what the drone is capable of lifting. We did some amazing architectural work with the rope and also some navy knots. Okay, see what happens. Okay, maybe the guy in the forum was right and it really couldn't lift up more than 7 pounds or... Ta-da! There you go. Okay. We could have put that rope better, I know, and more stable on the drone, but hey, here you can see again the drone lifts it up, and with appropriate preparation it would have been stable for sure. For test number 2 we were comparing the Inspire 2 with the also brand new Phantom 4 Pro, both on ascending and descending speeds. Numbers given on reviews are great, but I really wanted to test them both together and see what happens. I'm assuming that the Inspire 2 will win, but let's take a look. We put the drones in a reasonable distance in hovering position. And we would drag them both in P mode and Spore mode all the way up to 100 meters. You can now see the stability of both, and nothing to say. First try of uh, flying up. Woo. Bye! Let's get serious. Here are both controllers, side to side, Phantom 4 Pro on the left, Inspire 2 on the right. Full throttle up in P mode. Let's go! Interesting to see both have almost the same speed. It seems that the Inspire does the final meter somehow faster, but we can say that both drones have a pretty much the same acceleration when flying up in P mode. Let's test them flying down. Go! that the Inspire 2 flies down faster. It even takes up to 20 meters distance to the Phantom 4 Pro. But wait! We want to land it and the Inspire 2 has to transform its arms in order to get into landing position and he loses some time and boom! There comes the Phantom 4 Pro and they almost land at the same time. This is just amazing! After this awesome result, now I'm really really excited to see how it works in sport mode. Come on, come on! I can't. 
can't believe what I just witnessed. Both ascending speeds are more stable even than my heart rate. They did 100% the exact same time, same speed, same everything. Who would have said that? My mind is just blown. Let's now see how they descend, see what happens in this case. And the winner is Phantom 4 Pro! Sorry that I panned the Inspire 2 in the last part, especially landing, it was the excitement seeing the result. However, this should not affect in the final result. Mind blowing again. What do you think of this? Now that we've seen which drone is faster, let's see which drone is stronger. Let's make this the battle of the century, Inspire 2 versus Phantom 4 Pro. Let's go! Before starting, we can already see that the Phantom 4 Pro does not even move the Inspire 2 from the ground at full speed. Oh my god, this won't end up good for sure. First, we would try the Phantom flying full speed backwards to see if he can move a bit the Inspire. Which by the way is just hovering, not pulling anyhow back. No way anything happened and at some point the Phantom flew up and we don't really know why. Now let's see what happens if the Inspire pulls the rope. See ya Phantom! It went out of the image so I told the Phantom to pull a bit. No way the Phantom can hold the Inspire 2. Bye again! <laughs> this is amazing. And now let's see this from another point of view. Hello, it's Inspire, we're delivering Phantoms. <laughs> well, I think the images speak for themselves. So the flight of the century was won by Inspire 2. A lot has been said about all the sensors on the new drones, saying that they were really stable indoors, being now able to take amazing shots surrounded by walls and a ceiling. Let's take a look on this. First I tested the drone in ATI mode, no GPS, no sensors, no nothing. This is what happened. The drone wasn't stable at all, it went to one of the laterals and I had to show my incredible pilot skills to make it behave properly. As I wasn't sure about the sensor, I was going to hit it against the wall and whew, that was close. You really have to be careful with in this mode, indoors. Now I did the exact same thing in P mode. I have to say the garage was in the minus one floor. And look at this, pure stability. So let's try to use those sensors again. Front first. Let's crash the drone into the wall, come on. It had scanned the wall even before taking off, so I not only couldn't fly fast towards the wall, but it would also stop and hover at a distance of about 2 meters. Incredible. And now let's see those sensors pointing up to see if it does avoid the ceiling. It also had scanned the ceiling before taking off, so it wouldn't allow me also to fly up fast. It flew up slowly and at a distance of about 1 meter or 3 feet it would stop and even fly down a little bit. I was testing the avoidance sensor to see on a small hill how the Inspire would react. I thought it would fly slowly up to avoid it, but it didn't. It just stopped flying and started hovering. Later I found out that this only works in follow mode. Hmm. Here's the normal result of flying towards the wall. As we can see, it works perfectly. Oh 
all those tests were just amazing and some of the results I didn't expect. You should know by now that I'm a big big fan of the Phantom 3 Pro as it was one of my first drones and as you have seen the videos on my personal channel. And I've been really skeptical always with all those new drones and all those new sensors telling me how great they were. Because I really thought they wouldn't improve the performance of the drone a lot. My first thoughts I had when I received the Inspire 2 here were it's too big, it's too heavy, I can't really travel with it. But after all those tests and really flying the Inspire 2 for a few days now, my mind has changed completely. This thing is just incredible, it's not too big and it actually is fun to fly bigger drones. The drone is stable, the drone is safe, I don't worry that it can actually harm me or anything like that or even crash. It has a really beautiful design, I have to say. <laughs> I'm in love with the new Inspire 2. <laughs> we'll be doing a lot of things with this Inspire 2. We'll be testing the cameras, both, I have them both. We'll even do more tests. Some of the videos will include drag races. I'm not allowed to say it yet. I'm, let me just tease you. It's gonna be including Teslas. All I have to say is just stay tuned, subscribe, like, comment if you saw anything that you didn't like or if you liked it, just let me know. Uh, if you have any doubts, leave them in the comments, we'll be answering. And I think that's for today. Remember, keep calm and let's talk UAV.